So as the king of emulation, I make a lot of emulation and hard drive related videos when it comes to retro gaming stuff. And you guys seem to enjoy them. But one thing I always see is RGT. This feels a little bit out of my reach as far as my literacy with computers or, hey, RGT, I don't have time to set all this stuff up. And I just want a sort of all in one solution. And honestly, I've been looking for an all in one solution. Well, Ken Hank has a brand new product, the Ken Hank Mini MP100. I'm the first person in the United States to get my hand on one of these because they sent me it to check out and this is an all-in-one mini pc that has everything built into it all your games all your emulators everything is already set up for you with this mini pc so i want to showcase this off it is available on ken hank's website i'll have a link to it in the description box down below but i want to get into the nitty-gritty with this i want to take a look at it see what it offers and see what everything comes with and see how it plays the games and you might be surprised all right, so once again, a huge thank you to Ken Hank for sending this in to the channel. Very cool to be the first person to have a review unit of this to showcase it. I'll have a link to the Ken Hank website where you can pick one up in the description box down below. I have talked to them since I did their last system and just gave them some general ideas, things I would personally like to see, and I think that potential consumers would like to see. So we will see if they took anything into account based on my words. You can see it's kind of a beefy boy taken out of the box here. We have our instructions. I don't really need those because I understand what we got going on here, but I think this is a really cool idea. A PC that has an operating system already built into it so that you don't have to mess with external hard drives or anything like that. And you could just simply get into the games you know you could simply get into playing games i'm assuming it boots up on its own right off the bat we see here we have our usb connectors but if it boots up right off the bat i'll, I'll like it because it actually is like a console like if it just goes into windows mode you know you need you need a mouse and a keyboard and stuff like that so we'll see how that works out but power button usb supplies uh hdmi ethernet DP, our power supply on here, little um, SD card slot as well. Nice little unit. It's got a little weight to it. Let's see what else this comes with here. In here, we have our power supply and our HDMI cable. I mean, basic stuff here. What's in here? I think this is mounting hardware. Some people like to mount these systems and stuff like that. Okay, this is the second half of our power supply and then some mounting hardware. So pretty no frill stuff here. Um, they also did send in this controller. It comes with everything. So we'll go ahead and unbox this to the GameSir T3 wireless game controller. Got a little security seal on there. I mean, I'm not I'm not like saving the box for a rainy day. This isn't a this isn't like a toy or something like that where I need it still in box we have our usb charger there it just fell out this honestly doesn't feel like a like a bad controller actually the d-pad on it is pretty pretty good the analog sticks feel nice um buttons are good it's got a matte finish to it like it's not just the color it's a it's a matte finish triggers feel pretty decent i like it it's it's a uh, it's not too bad here. And of course we have our wireless dongle that we will plug into the system. I might just go for a connected thing on this just because, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't have a charge in it already. I have made an absolute mess of my desk right here, but that's what you get with this system. So, you know, pretty cool. You get the computer, you get the controller, but I wanna boot this up. I wanna start it up. I wanna get into the games, the operating system, all that fun stuff. So let's hop straight into it. All right, so as you can see here, we have booted up our Ken Hank MP100, and yeah, we need a mouse. So I know everyone has a mouse in their house. I just would have liked to have been able to skip this step, make it so that this boots up automatically instead of, you know, just making us double click it. I guess we can adjust that to have it boot automatically if we want to within the system settings, but it would have been nice if right off the bat that was able to be done, but we'll go ahead and double click RetroBat. So this is running an Intel Alder Lake N100 CPU. It has 256 gigs of SSD, 500 gigs of HDD, eight gigabytes of RAM, um, four threads, four cores. I'm not expecting PS3 
or anything like that to run on this probably just ps2 and below but hopefully all that sort of stuff runs well this is retailing it's on sale right now for about 320 dollars on ken hank's website so we'll take a look at it together uh we'll take a look at the different systems on here and see what it is all about now i am indeed using the game sir controller that comes with this system because i mean why not you might as well right and it is fully optimized, just set up as an Xbox 360 controller, which is cool. So let's go ahead to the start of our list of systems here. Um, all games, there are 62,000 games on this device. We have 3DO, Commodore Amiga 500, the Amstrad CPC, the Amstrad GX 4000. You guys know I'm a big Amstrad fan. Um, arcade games, Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Atari 7800, a Thomas Wave, Cave, I don't know what that is, ColecoVision, Commodore 64, CPS1, CPS2, CPS3, Dreamcast guy. Now, as you can see here, there's 35 Dreamcast games, so that means we're not getting a full library of games, and you'll see that as we go throughout the system, but I feel like most of the systems are actually curated very well for the games and if you want to learn how to add games and stuff like that like you could do it it's running windows 11 so it's not like it's super difficult to figure out there's a million tutorials out there we have famicom final burn neo game and watch game boy game boy advance game boy color game gear nintendo gamecube 12 games sega genesis igs i don't know what that is irem I guess they're special and they get their own thing. The Atari Lynx, MAME for more arcade goodness, the Sega Master System, Intellivision, the Mega CD, aka the Sega CD. We got Mega Drive and Mega Drive. I'm guessing this is Japanese and this is like the one that we all know, the European stuff. Ooh, M2, very nice. Model 3 on here as well. You know, I love some Sega arcade games. The MSX, MSX2, Mujin, Naomi, Naomi 2, TurboGrafx 16, TurboGrafx CD, Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, Neo Geo Pocket, and of course the Pocket Color. The Nintendo 3DS, couple games on there. Once again, very easy to add games to a Nintendo 3DS emulator. Uh, Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, NES, Famicom Disk System, Super Famicom. There's way too many Super Famicom. They need to clean clean that up, Ken Hank. I've told you this before, clean that up. Open Beats of Rage, PC Engine, PC Engine CD-ROM 2, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Minis, PlayStation Portable, Pokemon Minis, Ports, Psycho, Psycho, whatever, Sega Saturn, 32X, SG-1000, Sharp, X68000, Super Nintendo, Super Graphics, Nintendo Switch, ooh, trying to get me in trouble, Oozebox, Vetrix, Virtual Boy, Supervision, Wii, with two games, Wii U, one game, Windows, Wonderswan, Wonderswan Color, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. So a wide variety of consoles on here. I'm not going to waste time with crappy consoles. And when I say crap, I'm not going to waste time with the lower end stuff. Your Sega Genesis, your Super Nintendos, all that's going to work right out of the bat like no problems whatsoever of course you can customize different things on here and do different filters you could change uh internal resolutions to upscale things we're going to start out with sega saturn though and i must say the sega saturn library isn't the best i'm surprised that a lot of these games are missing but i guess stuff like virtua fighter 2 daytona usa you can play that on the arcade boards which are technically the better versions of the game but once again you can always add stuff should you want to we'll check out a little panzer gotta check out panzer dragoon one of the classic games on here a game for star fox fans but i wanted to start out with the sega saturn because playstation one runs on anything like that's it's anything could run a playstation one but saturn and up you start to get a little bit trickier i mean dreamcast is pretty easy too so i'm expecting some good performance out of dreamcast but i wanted to start out with the saturn just because i feel like you know that's an appropriate system to start out with so hopefully we have some good saturn results here and as you can see okay so far so good everything looks uh nice and well done all righty so we have no slowdown whatsoever we have our controller that we're using the game sir which i must say surprisingly good 
I like this controller. The D-pad feels pretty decent. We'll check out a 2D fighter a little later on. The analog stick feels nice, though. It, it's kind of reminiscent of a Wii U um, Pro controller in terms, or the Nintendo Switch Pro controller in terms of how the analog stick feels. Um, but I'm liking it. And you can see here, like, this is, this is running flawlessly. So a good start. A very good start. Very promising for Sega Saturn stuff. We'll check out one more game just to make sure um, that everything is running well. I, I mean, I guess we could go ahead and check out the uh, D-pad with some Street Fighter Alpha as well. So, obviously, there's going to be better versions of this out there on this system. I do like the borders, though. I think the border for the individual game, it's a nice touch on there. Um, you know, you can play the arcade version of this game should you want to do that. And you probably would want to, you know, less loading, better, uh, slightly better visuals, I should say, because really, I mean, they, they freaking Capcom, Capcom 2D fighters and Sega Saturn, like a match made in heaven. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know how they were able to figure out everything and every other third party in the world wasn't able to, but I mean, they did it. So we might as well reap the rewards and bask in its glory of a great system with great games and great performance on the 2d fighters way better than the playstation one stuff here all righty so let's hop into this game okay you needed to, come on with the loading stuff all right here we go d-pad time as you can see the game is running absolutely flawlessly and i love this d-pad i think this d-pad is dude, this game sir controller is freaking great I, I, I sincerely enjoy it, and I'm glad they they put this in there. And it does come, if you purchase the system, it does come with this controller. So, like, that's pretty cool. Why am I getting destroyed right now? Good God almighty. All right, let's try to focus a little bit here. We're focused, we're focused on the quality of the emulation and all that stuff. We're not necessarily focused on my gameplay, although I would like to look like not a scrub. But yeah, the controller is working well, and more importantly, the emulation is working fantastic. I didn't have any problems there. Just personal problems, obviously, with uh, the controls and focusing on the game. That's why I'm not a streamer, folks. I cannot talk and play a game at the same time. I just confuse myself, and it doesn't it doesn't go very well for me. But yeah, so Sega Saturn, looking good, playing good, sounding good, feeling good. Let's move on. All right, so taking a look at the list of Dreamcast games here, you can see pretty pretty solid stuff here. You got your Crazy Taxis, Ikaruga, Jet Grind Radio, um, you know, your Sonics, all that sort of stuff, Virtual Fighter, um, pretty much what I would expect to see here. So a, a well-done curated list, um, Resident Evil Code Veronica, still stuck on the Dreamcast slash PS2 slash GameCube, so I guess it's not really all that stuck. Um, just jump into some Jet Grind Radio here. Obviously, we have the spiritual successor to this game now, which is actually pretty fun. Um, I made a video on it. Make sure you guys check that out if you have not yet. But with these things, I just like to hop into the games that it's easy just to get into the game itself because I'm looking at performance. That That's all I'm looking at here. Graffiti is art. Mark Echoes Getting Up. Remember that game on the PlayStation 2? I don't think many people remember that game. Good old manual tutorials, because that's that's what I need. Um, Yeah, Dreamcast looking good. It looks like it's upscaled times two, which is nice. Um, Playing as it should. Looking as it should. So that's good. You know, I, I didn't expect much, much trouble with Dreamcast, because like I said, you know, kind of an easier system to emulate, because people have been emulating it forever but still nice to see on here so we'll check out another dreamcast game and then we'll move on the virtual fighter game nobody likes except me i don't know why people don't like i mean i kind of get it okay they only added in two new characters okay that kind of sucks you know but in retrospect like it's still a really good game it still looks really good it still plays really good and i guess you know with all the model uh, twos and three systems we have we can play superior versions but i think this is a fine 3d fighting game i liked it i liked the levels i liked the new characters i liked the changes that they did with the team battles and stuff it's fun i mean that's what a fighting game's supposed to be and you can see here looking great upscaled times two i believe running great as well like i said you can adjust upscaling on the system and stuff like that i don't feel like many people who pick this up are wanting 
to mess around with settings, but you can learn it. You know, that's that's what's cool about this device is it's a learning device as well because you're not just stuck with these games. Like, yes, right off the bat, you, these are the games you have, but you can always add more and remove games that, you know, you don't like or something like that or you're not interested in. So Dreamcast running great, but what about some GameCube? Let's check that out next. These songs that play in the background are entirely too loud. Here is our GameCube lineup of games. Pretty much what you would expect. You know, I would have liked to have seen Metal Gear on here. Maybe Wind Waker. Come on. You could have given me that. But like I said, you can always add whatever you want to add to this system. We'll check out some Double Dash on here, which is actually a game. I did not grow up with this game. I haven't played this game much at all. I don't know why. I owned a Dream or a GameCube, I should say, but I never got around to buying or playing Double Dash. Like, we would just play Mario Kart 64 and stuff like that because that was like what we were familiar with, I guess. I'm, I'm not quite sure here. But I have played this as an adult. I enjoy it. I think the team mechanic is interesting. I like to go with my weird team of Waluigi and Birdo. Just the two sort of different characters in this game a little different from the rest but those are my you know that's cool oh we stalled out that's nice okay so um gamecube's uh, uh looking pretty good here i believe this is at two times resolution so yeah running perfectly obviously you know a mario kart game isn't necessarily the toughest game in the world but they're always lookers like they're always some of the better looking titles on a system. Like think about the uh, the 3DS or the and even the DS. Um, you know Mario Kart 64. Eh, Diddy Kong Racing looked a little bit better, but okay. This is this is promising. You know this is uh very good. I'm happy that GameCube is running well on this because I think that's a that's a big win here. So we'll check out another GameCube game and then uh, move on to the next system. All right, so we're checking out some Smash Brothers now on the Nintendo GameCube. Looking good. Um, I think it looks nice with the upscaling and stuff. And it, it's playing well. The environments look good. Characters look good. Oh, changing to Sheik on me, are you? You're a sly one, Zelda. But, uh, yeah. So, GameCube, I mean, it's, it's running great. So, I have no problems with GameCube on this system. Like I said... Might have added, personally, I might have changed up the games list a little bit. Ken Hank, you can always hit me up. I'll give you a perfect games list and what to focus in on. We can work together. But, yeah, so GameCube playing great, looking great. Let's check out something else. All right, here's some Sega Model 2. I absolutely loved Top Skater when I was a kid. It was, I would always play it in the arcade that I would visit because this was like, the coolest looking skateboarding game that was available at that time. But as you can see, Model 2 looks freaking great. These old Sega games that use polygons have aged so well when you throw in some upscaling with them. Like, they, they just look phenomenal. Like, look at how clean and crisp the textures are. I, I, I love old Sega games. So to have Model 2 and Model 3 stuff on here is great. Hopefully, Pennywise doesn't uh, get me in trouble. <laughs> Like, I, I, I remember this game so well. So much fun. So much fun playing this game. And, yeah, you know, it's it's definitely cooler, <laughs> like, having the skateboard. But good luck finding one of those in, in good condition for a, a cheap price. So, Sega Model 2, looking great, sounding great, playing great. So many fond memories of this game. Oh, man. To be 13 again. To be 13 again. All right, so here's our PlayStation 2 lineup of games. Surprisingly... It's a really good lineup. Um, we got our Metal Gears. We got our Grand Theft Autos. We got Resident Evil 4, Silent Hill 2, Tekken 5. So, very good. Um, I think this is a, a well-done curated list. I like this list better than I actually like a Bully. Like, Bully is freaking amazing. Um, I like this list better than the GameCube list. I think it has, you know, more of the heavy hitter titles on here. We'll check out some Tekken 5 to see how our PlayStation 2 looks and plays. But so far... I'm pretty impressed with this system, honestly. Um, obviously, we still have to check out a few more things, but oh, remember when Namco used to put in little mini games for us to play during the loading screens? Oh, Namco, you used to spoil us. Bring these back. I like these. But yeah, obviously, we'll have to check out a few other things on here, but it's a, it's a 
good little system, man. Like, it, it's a powerful little dude. It comes preloaded with everything. You just double click and you're in. So, um, liking it so far. Well, oh, man, I didn't mean to pick him. I don't know his moves. I don't even know who this dude is. I don't even know his name, and I'm sorry. I meant to pick King. King is kind of King is kind of my guy, but he's a ninja, so I mean that's freaking cool. But this looks good. Um, no slowdown whatsoever. Upscaled looks like times two on here uh, by default. By the way, I should say so you don't have to mess around with that. I will show you how to get into that stuff should you want to mess around with it. But yeah, um. No frame rate issues, no graphical glitches or anything like that. So, okay, okay, okay. This is this is good stuff here. Um, I do want to check out Burnout. And I know Burnout has that long, disgusting tutorial that you always have to do. And it's so annoying. It's like, dude, I know how to play Burnout, okay? You don't need to tell me. And you can't skip it. Whoever, whoever decided to put that as a thing at EA or Criterion, I hope they are unemployed. I don't want anyone to lose their job except for that individual because they just they cause so much stress and headaches. But, yes, Tekken 5 running great. Let's check out Burnout. Oh, my God, the tutorial. Please, why? I exited out, too. No. All right, so now that that god-awful tutorial is done, I must say, right off the bat, I'm very impressed with Burnout 3 because if you know anything about uh, PCSX2, which is, I'm assuming, the emulator they're using, um, it has trouble with this game. When I was trying to set this game up on one of my personal things, I was getting the black clouds where, like, the clouds don't populate and uh, I should say black sky where the clouds don't populate and I was having performance issues, but this is running it brilliantly, like completely flawless. And as you can see in the sky, like the, the clouds are, are there. So I'm trying to figure out these controls. Bear with me here. But yes, this is great. This is awesome. This is because like I said, dude, like burnout does burnout three does not work well when I whenever I try to set it up. But OK. Okay, very impressive. Looks like some time and effort went into this, although we still have those somewhat uncurated games list. 13,000 Super Famicom games. Come on now. But no, very good stuff here with Burnout. And PS2 is working phenomenal on here. If the game that you love from the PS2 era isn't on here, it's very easy to find those games on the internet. I'm not going to tell you how, but, you know, check your archives dot orgs and uh you can probably find some stuff so yes very impressive ps2 emulation on this thing and great to see burnout 3 running well so we'll check out some of the the crazier systems like i don't know why wii u is on here and playstation 3 but we'll take a quick look at those and then i'll give you guys my final thoughts all right so i don't know why mario kart 8 for wii u is on here i'm not expecting wii u stuff and ps3 stuff to really work well at all like i said it's a four core four thread system so i'm not going to try to mess around with anything tinker with any settings i'm just playing this as it is i'm not expecting it to work great because you know it's 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 it feels like it's outside of this system's capabilities in terms of the pc side of things but i mean you know it looks all right it's obviously not running at full speed but I mean, it's running at a, a playable speed. That almost makes me think, like, if I adjust some settings on um, Simu, which is the emulator they're using, I'm sure, you might could get perfect performance out of this. As it stands now, it's it's definitely more than playable. I'm not sure if they chose this game as the only Wii U game because it's, like, maybe easier to run. I don't know. I mean, the graphics are, are pretty impressive for a uh, for a Wii U game. But yeah, this is this is more than playable. Like I wouldn't play it personally, but if I had like a kid or something, like a little kid and just be like, "Hey, I'm going to play this." Cuz they're not going to know any difference. Kids are stupid anyways. Um, but yeah, Wii U is definitely playable on here. You could probably tinker with some settings, add some more games and potentially even get better performance, but straight out of the box, like not bad, not optimal, but not bad. Um, I want to check out that PS3 though, because I'm not expecting that to work at all. <laughs> so our PS3 game is Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. I would have expected some like PS3, like smaller games, like the, the arcade games or whatever, or 
you know, like afterburner and stuff like that. Obviously, this is not running well at all. Um, pretty much unplayable. So I'm not I'm not quite sure why this is on here. Like if I was going to customize this system and put some different games on it, this would be something I would get rid of just right out of the gate because obviously a, a PlayStation 3 game is going to take up a lot of space. And if it's not running well, you know, why why bother? I'm kind of surprised Ken Hank would have put this on here to begin with, but I mean it's on here, so you know, we're looking at it. But yeah, kind kind of an odd choice, you know, maybe some lower end PS3 stuff would work as the emulator itself. You know, it does boot up. It does work like as far as, you know, starting up and, and playing a game. So maybe some of the smaller PS3 titles will be decent on here. But, you know, I'm, I'm not even expect. Well, you know, I mean, playable in a sense that like i don't know you could you could maybe mess around with this it just feels sluggish but i mean the game is technically playing and you know the combat doesn't feel terrible it's just it's just not running at optimal speed it's it's okay i'll say it's okay i'll upgrade it cuz now i'm starting to move around a little bit and you know the uh the frame rate when in combat isn't completely terrible but it's not optimal. But overall, I think this is a, a decent little system that we have here. You know, it's packed with a bunch of games from a bunch of different systems. I mean, looking at like PlayStation 1, you got like a, a billion games on here. All the games you would want to play from the PS1 era. Um, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't buy this for PS3 and up. You know, like I said, this system, it's not really made for it. I probably would have cleaned up the games list a little bit, maybe put some different titles on there, you know, maybe less um, Super Famicom games. I don't understand why there's so many. I want to play this. This is how we're going to this is how we're going to end. I want to see if this works, because if this works, I'll be I'll be extremely impressed with this system. But yeah, it's it's a good little build. You know, for the $318, I believe it's sitting at now, which comes with the controller. Like, that's a good price for the amount of content you're getting. And the fact that you don't have to worry about, like, setting a bunch of crap up. Like, you, you simply double-click a button, and you are good to go. You are playing the game, or you're in the menu system for the games, I should say. And you are then going to be playing the game. So a pretty decent little system here. I don't want to do this now, network checking. My viewers do not want to watch this. All right, so as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by the menus of this game, um, I like this system. I think it's really cool. I like just how easy everything is to do. And, you know, you don't have to mess around with stuff. But if you choose to mess around with stuff, like, you definitely can and add different things in and you know change different things but just as a plug and play setup like i think it's it's pretty well done it's definitely one of the better ones out there yes you can get cheaper options but most of those cheaper options aren't going to run games the way you want them to or aren't going to have a variety of stuff that you'll like really want so i'll have a link to this in the description box down below once again thank you ken hank for sending this over if you guys ever want to link up on a project and like you need some advice or you know, a, a games list that I think people will like, like, feel free to hit me up. Obviously, you got my email. We talk. Um, but yeah, cool little system here. So check it out. Link in the description box down below. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel and you made it all the way to the end, thank you. You're a freaking star because this is a long video. And uh, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.